Hey there, YouTube. How would you like to talk about religion? All right, guys, so religion is a difficult topic. It is a, it's kind of like the political topic that we discussed in a previous video. I, I don't have reservations about talking about the reasons I believe things, but I know a lot of people have reservations on hearing them, and that's why I believe this is a very difficult topic. So in last week's video, I talked a little bit about belief and about how I think that you can't really control your beliefs, but you can control the information that forms them. Now for me, religion is um, touchy, and I mentioned it specifically in the last video, but it's touchy because part of the religious viewpoint is to limit the information from opposing viewpoints. And I find this to be one of the key issues that led me away from Christianity. So to give you guys a little bit of backstory, I was born and raised as a Christian. My, my mother was very devout Christian and is to this day, she operates solely from that perspective in her life and I wish her the best. I, I feel like she has very positive impacts based on her faith and I in no way would like to discourage that. And, and I wouldn't like to discourage that for any of you that are watching this either. I am simply stating things the way that I see them. This is my opinion. And if you think that I'm wrong or that I've made a mistake here, feel free to reach out to me in comments or on Facebook. Um, I, I try to stay pretty transparent and I do respond to all of the comments that I receive. So let's get started. Basically, uh, my religious upbringing was, as I said, I was raised as a Christian. Uh, we belonged to the Methodist Church and brought up that way. Now, I was given a Bible pretty early on in life and I read it devoutly. I was truly and honestly a Christian within the very fabric of my being. I felt like that was a place that I belonged in. It was a place that I found the answers to the questions of life that I sought. Um, I've always been somebody that really likes to think and dig deeper and understand a subject fully. I had issues with this in math. When I was a kid, I had to learn why something works in a certain way, not just that it works in a certain way. Science uh, was a similar issue and so were history. I, I needed to know the answers behind why this was the truth, not just memorize that an answer was true. So for me, that played an early part of my foundations in Christianity. And uh, while I did spend a significant time questioning the belief in Christianity, I did so from the perspective of a Christian, as a devout Christian. Now, I will say that I think that reading the Bible word for word, which I have done in three different translations throughout my life, and particularly the New King James Version early at this point in my life, I had some questions that that brought up. And I, I feel like reading the Bible is a very quick way to start questioning your belief because things don't necessarily line up. And I know that there are lots of apologists out there that would love to present those answers and definitely hear them out. Um, definitely give them a good listen to and find out why those, those things exist and what their answers for that are. I by no means am trying to say that you should just listen to what my thought process was and take that on face value that would defeat the purpose of skepticism. For me, questioning Christianity came very naturally. For me, it was more about certain things that, I, that didn't line up with, with what I saw as typical Christian values as they were portrayed in church versus what was portrayed in the Bible. The very first one that automatically comes to mind was the book of Joshua, and in particular, Joshua, I think six, where they were talking about the fall of Jericho, the walls of Jericho. I'm sure 
plenty of you out there if you have ever been involved in the Christian faith and you understand what I'm talking about and if you if you haven't then the gist of it and I'm paraphrasing of course is that Jericho existed as a city that was outside of the Christian tenants and or the Jewish tenants of the time and they did not believe in the true God and they, their practices were not in line with God's practices. So the Jews were told to go to Jericho and to destroy it. They found the walls of Jericho, defended the city well, and they couldn't have a full-on invasion, so there was some magic chanting and circling of the walls that happened, and the walls of Jericho crumbled, and then they were able to invade, and they killed every man, woman, and child by the tip of the sword in order to eradicate the non-believers. So stories like this are, I would say, unfortunately prevalent in a lot of religions throughout the world. I, I could not, in my mind, simply say, yeah, sure, that seems legit. However, that that one scenario alone wasn't the only one that, that caused me pause, and I'm not going to get into all of them, but the Book of Judges was, was a really large one. When we get into particular chapters regarding slavery, in my upbringing, I have very close familiar ties with another African-American family, and we always grew up as family together. So for me, there wasn't that racial separation in my early childhood. So when I came across passages in Exodus regarding how to properly treat your slave, and that certainly brought up some questions for me as well. But without getting into all of them, this is where my first questions arose. And when I sought answers for them, I felt my questions were either not being answered sufficiently or they were being deflected. And, and primarily they were being deflected because people didn't have good answers for them, which made me search for answers further. Now, I didn't automatically just shun Christianity. I thought that there was really one key thing that Christianity answered, or really two key things that Christianity answered that I couldn't gra grapple with my mind, and that was abiogenesis, so the origins of life. The Bible clearly demonstrates their answer for the origins of life, and the origins of everything, like the cosmos and, and all origins, the origins of space and time as we know it, which I, I, I very clearly resonated with the Big Bang Theory early on and with the theory of evolution through natural selection early on. Evolution is a very clearly demonstrated fact. The theory of evolution being how that fact relates to the progression of organisms on the planet and speciation, etc. So those, that, that's something for another time as well. I, I don't want to get too wrapped up here, but neither of those theories actually answers the question, nor do they serve to answer the question of what the origins are. As far as origins go, Christianity being the only philosophy that I knew at the time, provided that answer and therefore I was going to stick to Christianity and find out the answers to the other things that were muddying those waters. Needless to say, that didn't work out for me. And before I really approached into my teen years, I was still grappling with Christianity and trying to reconcile some of those questions. And I developed one question that really bothered me the most at that time. I kind of quit really asking the question about origins and abiogenesis, but I started asking a one particular question. I said to myself, as a Christian, how can I be okay with somebody who is brought up their whole life believing in a philosophy other than Christianity, being condemned to a fate worse than death, being hell in the Christian faith? So if somebody is born in India, if I was born in India, 
and I was brought up in a faith system that practices what we know in America to be Hinduism, how could I therefore say that that person should be damned to go to an eternity of suffering for the longest, greatest time possible, which is forever? How could I be okay with that without, you know, if I live my whole life never hearing the Christian philosophy, and there are plenty of people in the world that do this, believe it or not, expand your mind here a little bit. Or if I was brought up to believe in a different philosophy that taught me not to learn about Christianity or that Christianity is fundamentally wrong and they're the ones going to hell, how could I reason in my mind that it was okay to condemn those people to the worst possible imaginable fate? I couldn't. So, I had to look for the answers elsewhere. Now, I quickly found, doing some research on different world religions, and, and I had done some research earlier on into ancient myths and legends. Um, earlier in my life, through the public library, uh, I used to visit very regularly. But for me, those answers didn't satisfy the question on their own. However, every single religion that I came across tried to answer the same abiogenesis and origins answers, so maybe there was something to them. Now, coming from a religion that excludes all other religions, I felt compelled to find one that didn't have that same issue, which is why I didn't start off looking at Islam, or I didn't start off at you know, Judaism or any of the other prominent faiths that believe their answer is the right answer. Now, I have since learned that there are many Jewish people even that are accepting of other people's faiths and um, are non-judgmental. And I've even found Christian groups that are non-judgmental when people don't believe exactly as they do and kind of answer this question. I unfortunately didn't find it then in my life. I went from there and started looking at a number of different religions. I started learning about different pagan faiths early on. Wicca drew my attention pretty quickly because it preached, well it doesn't really preach, but it taught tolerance and it taught acceptance. It taught that there are many different paths and just because you change the name on something doesn't mean that you're wrong and you could still go to the good place after you died. And so I followed that for a while. However, I wasn't completely, like I didn't cash in all my chips for Wicca. I also started to look at other faiths. So I spent a lot of time with an Eric Krishna group and they practice a westernized version of the Hindu faith, resolving from the Rig Vedas and into the um, Bhagavad Gita. So I did learn quite a bit from them as well and, and what they thought of, uh, what they thought was right and wrong, and there were some things, um, in particular things that bothered me about that faith group. It wasn't so much the community, it was the black and white, our dietary choices are the only ones that could possibly be right. We're not going to present any evidence to back that up, we're just going to give you an assertion that is a fact that you have to follow it in order to follow us. Those kind of things bothered me and I found that in a lot of different groups. I also found some really strange things like people that believed that it was impossible to ever leave the planet Earth in any capacity than in a spacecraft because the planet Earth was a separate plane of existence and things like that that it wasn't so much that I thought they were stupid for believing it. Don't think that that's, that's where my mindset went. My, my thought process was it is very strange to not have grown up listening to these arguments and to let them hold any weight, especially given what I know and what I value um, from the scientific method and from the evidence that we have to the contrary. I couldn't back those just blindly and arbitrarily. I did do some research, I, I read, I bought the Rig Veda and I started reading it, uh, I read the Bhagavad Gita, I even read the Book of Mormon twice, 
so far, and I read it the first time at this time. And I ultimately decided that Wicca was the correct choice for paganism in general, was the correct choice for neo-paganism. I started to devoutly believe in uh, Wicca, and mostly because its tenets were as long as you don't cause any harm to anybody, they followed the golden rule, the, the ethic of reciprocity. If you've done world religion studies, then you definitely understand that, um, so I'm not going to get a lot into detail there, but basically it's the don't harm anyone else and you can do whatever you want to do kind of philosophy. So as long as you're not hurting somebody else in any way, then it's okay. Every major religion in the world has a form of that. And in Wicca, they had the Wiccan Reed, which essentially was that same ethic of reciprocity. So from there, I started to learn as much as I could about the religion and what other people believed about it. And I found the spiritual aspects of it from a philosophical standpoint were really satisfying for me. They taught that there was no one true right way to go about any of this that you could beg, borrow, and steal from everyone else and see what the gray in between was, and that was usually where your answer lied. And I really loved the leaning in approach to, let's learn about you know, the rest of the world instead of restricting ourselves from it and develop that into what I personally believe. And religion does a very poor job, generally speaking, of self-exploration and learning and developing what you believe separately from an, an edict that runs what you have to believe in order to be good in that particular faith. So I found this very refreshing. I found that almost every single Wiccan that, that I came across believed something entirely different from the other ones. And while some people think that that is one of the negatives, I personally found that to be the most positive thing. There were no black and white, this is the correct way answers. It was very personal. So I did, I did practice Wicca for a number of years and I brought that into my military service. I did um, volunteer work. I worked with the Sacred Well congregation out of Texas and started leading faith groups and I was serving as a deacon, for lack of a better word, and leading faith worship services at multiple different military installations that I was at, including during an overseas deployment in Iraq. Now, during that deployment, uh, I was gifted with a book that I could read about why should we have faith to begin with. So that book was Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion, and it was given to me by my father-in-law. Now, my father-in-law was an atheist from the time that I first met him. He is a very intelligent person, and so when he offered me that book to see that perspective, I jumped on it. I, you know, I just being somebody that I like to learn as much as I can, I went ahead and read the book through its entirety and I went back through and read it a second time um, to kind of pick up some things that I thought, you know, I had some questions about some of it. And even Richard Dawkins says, you know, some of it is a bit on the fallacious side. But the general idea of the book rung very true. I, I found what I was reading and what I was absorbing to be rather not only enlightening but free. So hearkening back to the beginning of this, the beginning of my faith, the two things that really kept me in religion itself initially was because it satisfied, it was the only thing that satisfied the answers of abiogenesis and of origins of the universe. I no longer think that holding stock in these answers provided by religions to be correct answers. I think that they are assertions, and just because you answer a question and you're the only one to do so, doesn't mean that you are answering it correctly. Meaning that if, if I were to say that we all came 
from Universe Creating Pixies. Sorry, again, Matt Dillon hunting for a robin from you. It wouldn't be your job to disprove my claim because I'm not offering any actual evidence or, or anything. I'm just saying that this is what did it and I'm convinced that this is what did it. And now you should be convinced that this is what did it. You would have absolutely no problem saying you provided no reason for me to believe that, so I'm not going to. Uh, this would be pigeons raising. However, I'd, I'm not completely satisfied with that answer either. I think that it is important to listen to one another and to hear what we actually think and believe and to justify those beliefs that we hold to ourselves before we try to convince anyone else to believe the same things we do. I think that arbitrarily eliminating somebody's answer, first of all, it's a fallacy. It's called the fallacy fallacy of all things. Meaning that just because somebody is fallacious in presenting their argument does not mean that their conclusion or gist of their argument was necessarily false. It just means that you can't put stock into the way that they went about it doesn't mean they're wrong, it just means that I remain unconvinced. From there, I started to learn more and more about atheism and what atheists believe, and surprisingly enough, being an atheist means that you do not accept the claims that other people make that a God exists. Now, some, some people believe that God does not exist, typically called hard atheism. I, I don't fall into that camp because I've not seen any evidence to show that God does not exist. However, I've also not seen any evidence to show that God does exist, and therefore I don't have a reason to believe in that. More to a neutral default position. So I, I do definitely ascribe myself to being agnostic because I don't know that God does or does not exist. I do not wish to force that particular opinion upon anybody, that is just where I am. So agnostic and atheist are terms that I mean, we can define in greater detail later. For the purposes of this conversation, I am agnostic atheist, meaning that I don't know uh, one way or the other, being agnostic, agnosticism being knowledge, theism being belief. I do not ascribe belief to something that I don't have knowledge about. So that's where I'm at. I'm not trying to say, by saying that I'm an atheist, I'm not saying anyone who believes in something, anyone that is a theist is automatically wrong. I'm just saying I'm not convinced of your position. I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I know it's kind of a deep one, but this is one that I wanted to lay some foundational work on for later videos so that we can have better discussions and you'll kind of know my standpoints and where I'm coming from. Thank you guys as always for watching and if you like this content I do plan on continuing this series every Saturday. I will be posting these videos in the morning every Saturday and from here on into the future. These won't always be uh, about such deep topics as um, belief, in religion or um, political values or things like that but I do I did want to touch on these at first to kind of give a baseline for future content I, I plan on having some of these just being about me and about my pets and about uh, some of my life experiences so if you like this one give it a thumbs up go ahead and subscribe down below and you will see more and I will catch you in the next video thank you